I'm not a big fan of Mondays, and of course, um, it's a Monday, but this is a, a celebration Monday. And of course, um, I have to, it's a tough job that we do. Most people are at home right now, but we have to come to work, well, it's good. But of course, um, we are expecting Sam Soje on Zoom right now. Um, we haven't been able to get to him yet, but we'll continue the show as it comes on. Um, I've got um, Osas with me on the show. Hey, good morning. Welcome on the show, bro. Thank you very much. Having and um, basically, um, let's look at the results from the premiership matches played from the weekend. Yeah. And there were not so many surprises, but there were so, so many um, away wins. Yes. There was, there was one surprise, the everton Chelsea results, Everton coming out victorious at Goodison Park. But on the whole, there was... Let's start with that. Something is wrong with Chelsea. Definitely. They have been on a downturn in form since the Real Madrid match, definitely. Since the defeat at Bernabeu coming out of the Champions League, Chelsea have not been the same. They, they, they had a match against Man United during the week. They drew 1-1. One, one, and everybody gave them the win. Exactly. But then this match against Everson, Frank Lampard had his side well, well drilled and Chelsea just didn't have any answers to that performance, basically. Okay, let's look at um, all the matches. So what other what are the surprises did we have? No, 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 I think Liverpool, obviously, they won against Newcastle. I think Newcastle. we have the slides yeah. the, uh, for the results of the matches here. Okay, so let's have that now, please. So okay, yeah, Liverpool, EPL results, yes. Liverpool won against Newcastle. They needed that for the to keep the title race going. Man City also turning out a big performance at Leeds United. So the It's a surprise to some people that actually Liverpool could actually get a win. Because yes, because Newcastle at one St. James's Park. Just one. Since Eddie Howe has come in, Newcastle have been a different team. And that match was incredibly tough. And managed to get a goal from Naby Keita, a really well-worked goal. But yeah, Liverpool had to dig in to get that results and they put in pressure on Man City in the title race. Tottenham got spoiled against Leicester City. Tottenham yes. got a 3-1 win. And they've not been winning in the past few. And against the Leicester City. And luckily for us, we got a goal from Kelechi Iheanacho, yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah, but Tottenham, that match was crucial for Tottenham's top four race. And their big players turned up. Harry Kane, Vivongo and Hume Winston with the other two. So it was a big performance for Tottenham. Going into the North London derby coming in this weekend. So yes, Tottenham needed that win definitely. And Anto Antonio Conte at the end of the match was excited. He was delighted by the results. West Ham against United against Arsenal. That was one yeah. I was thinking would be a very would be big, a, 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 a banana, banana, slip banana peel for, 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 for Arsenal. Arsenal. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, they had to dig in. It was a tough match. At the end of the match, the scenes was crazy. Arsenal, yeah, coming up victorious against West Ham. West Ham, I think, have bigger fish to fly now with the Europa League. They have a match against Frankfurt to focus on this week, um, during the week. So I think they, West Ham were not fully concentrated on that match. But Arsenal, yeah, big performance from them and they're delighted to win that match. Everybody thought the Manchester City would actually rest a few players because um, they have a match yeah, yeah. next week. A big but they match. brought out all their big guns yes. against Leeds United and were wondering why Leeds. But 4 0 they win. I think Man City now, from now to the end of the season, they have every match for them is a final because they're being kept on their toes by Liverpool. And yes, they did the won against Leeds. Phil Foden was in an outstanding form, two assists, Gabriel Jesus scoring goals. So yes, they have a big match this week, Champions League. So yeah, they have to focus on that match. And I think that this week defines Man City's season, definitely. Well, okay. Let, we've spoken about Everton against Chelsea already. Now we're looking at Manchester United flop. I'm Manchester United fan, for okay. the record. But um, they're going up against Brentford, who can be but an appeal for any big team. We've seen Brentford beat Chelsea quite yeah. comfortably. Yeah. And yes, and since the signing of Kristen Eriksen, Brentford have been in superb form. And Manchester United, we know, have not been in the best form this year. So, and that match can be any scoreline. There's nothing, that's really difficult to predict. But that we'll see this, they're playing this evening, so we'll see how that turns out. But I'm, I'm expecting Brentford to put in a shift at Old Trafford. Mm. Oh, okay. Let's go to the French Le Championnat. Lyon brought up a 1,000 Le Championnat victories with a 3-0 victory at high-flying Marseille at the Stade Vildrum. After the quiet opening 45 minutes, Castello Lakeba scrambled home time on the opener for Peter Bott's side 10 minutes into the second half. Moussa Dembele doubled Lyon's lead when 
he headed in his 17th league goal of the season. Another cross from the right flank brought the decisive third call Toko Ekambi, finishing to make it four goals in his last three outings in the League One. Second place to Marseille have opened the door for other challengers following two defeats in their last four. Now, let's look at the French question. When I was growing up, I didn't know, I didn't hear anything about Paris Saint-Germain, PSG. Yeah, Lyon and some other teams, but not PSG. But Lyon are still trying to get there. Marseille have had a fantastic run so far. And um, Lyon were able to break a record with a win over Marseille at home. Um, they are 1,000th win in their history. And I think that's nice. But... Leon, are they coming back? As you said, that, was, that result was a surprise because Marseille are high flying this season. They're yeah. second in the league. But Leon with the 1,000 3-0 win, it was quite comfortable seeing the highlights there. And then, yeah, it's nice to see other French teams apart from PSG playing good football. Yes, the, but definitely growing up, PSG wasn't the name, the household name that is now. The likes of Leon and Marseille were the ones dominating French football. And it's nice to see them coming up against each other and playing good football. And yet, Leon will be delighted to get that result because they need to qualify for Europe. True if not the Champions League, then definitely the Europa League, having lost to West Ham in the quarterfinals. So it's a big result for them and yes, a piece of history, a piece of history for the club and that they can move on from now. Mm. Well, this is the one I want to talk about and it affects all of us, every one of us in the world today, not only Nigeria, the world today. Now, Naomi Osaka failed to survive her second round match at the Madrid Open as she was beaten by home player Sarah Sorabes Atoma. Now, Osaka produced plenty of unforced errors and also appeared to be suffering with a calf injury. And the stubborn Sorabes Atoma took advantage to win 6-3, 6-1 in just under an hour and a half. Before I go to the technicality of tennis, let's first of all go to the fact that Naomi Osaka consistently complains about mental issues. And you see, when you work on TV, or you work on radio, or you are in the public glare. People don't care how you feel. People don't care what you're going through. All they want is they want to have a good time. Yeah, they I, want I, to enjoy what you're doing. And I think it's tough on us sometimes. I think when you're at the top of a game, because you know, Osaka has been world number one. She's, she's won four Grand Slams. So people assume that she has the confidence in her abilities. But she has personal life. People don't realise that when you see a celebrity on, on TV or, or a sports personality, you think they have the confidence to get through everyday life, but they're human beings just like you and I. And yes, she's going through a tough time this period and she lost this match. And she, she's not really the best player on clay. Her grand slams have been in... Eggs, I was going to go there. Exactly. You know, Naomi, people are looking at the fact that the headlines that have been made is Maybe it's still the mental issues. Maybe it's still, she's still going through some issues and all that. But the truth is, from time, she's not really been the best on clay. Yeah, some people are just, some players are just, they struggle at certain courts. So Naomi hasn't, she's not a good clay court player. A clay court player, she's yes. She's a hard court play, player. She wins the US Open, the Australian Open. She struggles in this, this, this surface. So yes, it wasn't so much of a surprise for her to lose this match. But yes, definitely being one of the top players in the world, when she does lose a match, people will come up with rumours and so this mental, this mental health issue is playing up. But yes, she is a human being just like you and I. So she has, she's prone to making errors as we saw in these highlights. Now, people suspected that she would not win this particular competition because, um, first of all, she's not the best on clay. Yeah. And then secondly, people are saying that um, there are some sectors of haters who actually say they don't want Naomi to win anything anymore. Wow. I think really because some people said it was rude for us to have left that competition and said uh, mental issues but i think mental issues is a big reason to leave a competition really it is a big reason i think she's entitled to have to her own opinions and she's in control and of our her, 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 her life of her life basically and this match she she, she lost this match because she's not good in clear as we discussed and she also she's playing a crowd favorite a, Span a spaniard yeah so who is good on clay? Who is good on clay? So you can't really fault her determination or her efforts. It just she met, she came up against a better opponent on the day. Oh, so sad. Now Giannis Antetokounmpo was at his freakish best as the Milwaukee Bucks beat the Boston Celtics in their Eastern Conference semi-final series opener. The Greek dropped 24 points, 13 rebounds, and 12 assists 
triple double to propel the defending NBA champions to a 101-80-29 victory. The highlights of Guyanese's standout performance came midway through the fourth when he threw himself an alley-oop off the backboard. Boston stars Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown and the other tough showing night combining for just one 10 to 31 from the floor game two is in boston on tuesday night okay now um milwaukee box giannis and teto kumbo can they make it happen again this season it, well let's start with the eastern conference first yes this this win was a big win because they won this match at the home of the boston Celtics at the garden yeah. so they have the home advantage going into the, the rest of the the series but as you saw Giannis was in imperious form 24 points 13 rebounds 12 assists he led this team from start to finish but special mention for Gru Holiday as well 25 points which was um, the game high but Giannis is in form and when Giannis is in form the box always have a chance exactly they won this last time he did everything right the assists the three pointers the he did everything he, right even defensively he was on top of his game yeah so I think, but I think Boston Celtics, Boston Celtics will have something to say because they have too many good players for this, this tie to fizzle out. The likes of um, Marcus Smart, Jason Tatum will come back in and we'll see a different game next game. Hopefully. Now, Katie Taylor, for those of you who don't know her, she's the lightweight world champion in boxing. And um, she won with a, split, with a split decision victory over Armando Serrano on a historic night in Madison Square Garden, New York, in front of a rashes sellout crowd. Now, the Irish woman, who stretched her unbeaten professional record to 21-0, and Serrano were the first women to headline a fight at the world's most famous arena and put on a show-stopping performance equal to the occasion. Now, Taylor kept the fight on the outside to begin with before deciding to stand and trade in the fourth and fifth, and she almost paid dearly for the decision as Serrano connected, promoter Matchroom Boxing said the fight attracted more media applications than Britain Anthony Joshua's heavyweight fight at Wembley against Vladimir Flischko and against Alexander Usyk at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Now, Katie, somebody has to stop Katie, really. In the women's boxing, somebody has to stop her because she just doesn't stop winning. Now, she's so good. And people know her so much that she beats the media publicity of Vladimir Klitschko, Alexander Usyk, Anthony Joshua. I think she's that good. She's, she's an incredible athlete. She's probably the best. She's the best female boxer out there. Like definitely in lightweight division. And yes, this I think this fight was one of the um, boxing promoter Hedy Hernes called it the biggest fight, female fight in history. Yeah. I'm hearing rumors of both fighters got around $1 million in prize money. But Katie Taylor definitely, the Irish produce stunning fighters. Yes, Conor McGregor, they do. Katie Taylor. So they have a history of producing this fight. I don't, I don't really see anybody that can compete with Katie at the moment. So it's kind of unfair. The, her opponent this match was a tough fighter, but Katie still overcame in the split decision. So I don't really see anybody that can keep up with Katie at the moment, no. So, okay, now, um, let me leave you with Irish boxer, Katie. Now, she's so good, she has gotten more media publicity for her fight at the Madison Square Garden than any other male boxing fighter. Osas, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much, Lawal. Lawal is behind the cameras. You can't see him, but he can see you. Thank you very much, Debola De Blue, the Arsenal fan. Mm. Don't take him seriously, really. Tony, thank you very much. And downstairs, we've got D1, Dio. Thank you very much for manning the controls. My name is Wiley Scott. You're not seeing time tomorrow. Like I always advise you at the end of every show, if not for anything, at least for your heart, do some sports. <laughs> <laughs>